hello everyone last class discussion was on uh, uh, buses in that uh, the discussion was happened on uh, synchronous bus and uh, uh, synchronous bus in detail i hope you understood the concepts right so in today's class i am uh, going to discuss uh, the interface circuits so interface circuit again uh, an important concept here right here an io interface as we know an io interface consists of a circuitry which is required to connect an io device to a computer bus on one side of the interface we have the bus signal for uh, address data and uh, control that we have already studied that is address bus data bus and a control bus right so on one side of the interface we have the bus signals for address data and control whereas on the other side we have the data path with its associated controls to transfer the data between the interface and the io device so this side is known as a port the term port right so the port can be classified as a, a parallel port or as a serial port so there are two ports of uh, there are two types of ports the port may be a parallel port or it may be a serial port here the parallel port transfers the data in the form of a number of bits typically 8 or 16 bits simultaneously to or from the device a serial port it transmits and receives the data one bit at a time so that is what uh, the difference between parallel port and serial port i'll repeat a parallel port transfers the data in the form of number of bits typically 8 bits at a time or 16 bits at a time so simultaneously it will transfer to a uh, to or from the device whereas a serial port transmits and receives the data one bit at a time that is bit by bit something like that so communication with the bus is uh, same for both uh, the formats the conversion from the uh, parallel to a serial format and vice versa it takes place inside the interface circuit in the case of a parallel port the connection between the device and computer it uses a multiple pin connector and a cable with as many wires typically arranged in a flat configuration here the circuit at either end are relatively simple as there is no need to convert between the parallel and serial formats so this arrangement is suitable for the devices that are physically close to the computer for longer distances the problem of timing uh, skew mentioned earlier limits the data rates that can be used the serial format is much more convenient and it is uh, cost effective where uh, longer cables are needed here the serial transmission formats that i will discuss in uh, the later classes right so before discussing a specific interface circuit example so let us recall the functions of an io interface so as we have already studied io interface so let us recall that discussion so as you know an io interface it does uh, the following means uh, it performs uh, the task like uh, it provides a storage buffer for at least one word of data then an IO interface contains status flags that can be accessed by the processor to determine whether the buffer is full or empty. Then an IO interface it contains address decoding circuitry to determine when it is being addressed by the processor. Then an IO interface generates the appropriate timing signal required by the bus control scheme. Then an IO interface performs 
any format conversion that may be necessary to transfer the data between the bus and the IO device such as uh, parallel serial conversion in case of a serial port so these are what some of the tasks that are performed by an IO interface so this we have studied already right so now I will discuss a parallel port in detail right so I can now explain uh, the key aspects of the interface design with a practical example so first of all uh, as I uh, describe uh, the circuit for an 8-bit input port and an 8-bit output port then I am going to combine the two circuits to show how the interface for a general purpose 8-bit parallel port can be designed so first I will uh, discuss uh, the 8-bit input port afterwards I will discuss the 8-bit uh, output port so when we combine these two then uh, we can design 8-bit parallel port right so I'll discuss them one by one here we assume that uh, the interface circuit is connected to a 32-bit processor that uses uh, memory mapped I.O. and uh, the asynchronous bus protocol which was uh, discussed in uh, the previous classes right now as you can see uh, this particular figure uh, kindly uh, observe this uh, particular figure so observe this uh, figure very carefully right so this figure shows the hardware components that are needed for connecting a keyboard to a processor a typical keyboard consists of the mechanical switches that are uh, uh, normally open right so when a key is pressed its a switch closes and establish a path for an electrical signal this signal is uh, detected by an encoder circuit that generate the ASCII code for the corresponding character here a difficulty with such push button switches is that the contact bounce so when a key is pressed so that is what and difficulty here means when a push button switches or when a button is pressed then the contact bones uh, is going to happen so contact bones or bouncing is uh, a difficulty here right so although the bouncing may uh, last only for one or two milliseconds but this is a uh, long enough for uh, the computer to observe a single pressing of the key as uh, several distinct electrical events so this single pressing could be uh, erroneously interpreted as a key being pressed and released rapidly uh, several times so this is uh, uh, one of the difficulty or uh, one of the uh, challenging task here that is bouncing so uh, the effect of bouncing must be eliminated so we can uh, do this in two ways the first one is a simple debouncing circuit can be included or a software approach can be used when the debouncing is uh, implemented in software the IO routine that reads a character from the keyboard waits uh, long enough to ensure that bouncing has uh, subsided right so in this figure as it illustrate the hardware approach uh, debouncing circuits are included as a part of encoder block as you can see here uh, debouncing circuit is included as a part of uh, encoder uh, hardware or as a part of uh, encoder block here the output of encoder consists of the bits that represent the encoder character and one control signal uh, which is called as a valid signal so that valid indicates that a key is being pressed so this information is sent to the interface circuit which contain a data register that is a data in and a status flag sn 
or shin plaque right so when a key is pressed the valid signal changes from 0 to 1 it will cause the ascii code to be loaded into data in and uh, shin plaque is set to 1 the status plaque shin is clear to 0 when the processor reads the content of data in register here the interface circuit is connected to an asynchronous bus on which the transfers are controlled using the handshake signal master ready and slave ready signals the third control line is uh, r bar w bar that is a read or write signal so which will distinguish the read and write transfers so this is about uh, the parallel port and parallel port circuit in detail right so before the actual uh, parallel port uh, first i will discuss uh, the input interface circuit so as i told parallel uh, port circuit is a combined circuit of uh, the input interface as well as output interface circuit so i'll discuss them one by one so first i'll discuss uh, input interface circuit right as you can see in this figure so this figure shows a suitable circuit for an uh, input interface here the output lines of the data in register are connected to the data lines of the bus by means of a three-state drivers which are turned on when the processor issues a ready instruction with the address that select this register the shin signal is generated by a status plaque circuit so this signal is also sent to the bus through a three-state driver it is connected to the bit uh, d0 which means it will appear as bit 0 of the status register other bits of this register do not contain the valid information so an address decoder is used to select the input interface when the high order 32 bits of an address corresponding to any of the addresses assigned to this interface the address bit A0 it determines whether the status or the data register is to be read when the master ready signal is active. Here the control handshake is accomplished by activating the slave ready signal when either read state or read data is equal to 1. So this is how the uh, input interface circuit it performs uh, its task let us now consider an output interface that can be used to connect an output device such as a printer to a processor ok means uh, let us now consider an output interface that can be used to connect an output device such as printer to a processor which is shown in this particular figure right here the printer operates under the control of the handshake signal that is valid and idle signals in a manner which is similar to the handshake used on the bus with the master ready and the slave ready signals so when it is ready to accept a character the printer asserts its idle signal here the interface circuit can then place a new character on the data line and activate the valid signal then in response to this uh, the printer starts printing the new character and uh, it will neglect the idle signal which in turn causes the interface to deactivate the valid signal here the interface contains a data register that is a data out and status flag s out 
the status flag assert is set to 1 when the printer is ready to accept another character and it is clear to 0 when a new character is loaded into a data out by the processor so this is a, a small example of uh, how the output interface uh, is used to connect an output device such as uh, a printer to a processor connection so this is uh, in detail about uh, the input interface circuit and the printer to a processor connection so in next class that i am going to discuss uh, the output interface circuit and uh, this circuit i'll try to explain uh, by taking some example thank you